everybody, if you guys are fans of Fusion, you probably are aware of Scott Henderson from Tribal Tech and from his own stuff later on. There's this one song on his album, Tore Down House, a song called Dolmayet, and uh, he just shreds. He goes absolutely ham on this one section, sort of in the middle of the solo, where it departs from just a blues sort of inside pentatonic-y kind of feeling into what can only be described as fusion greatness. First of all, let's talk about the changes in Dolomite. It's a straight up 12 bar blues with one little variation. Instead of the five chord on measure nine, when it usually happens in the turnaround, he plays a flat seven seven. So he's tuned down to E flat, but I'm gonna treat it as if this song is in A, cause that's how he's thinking about it. So the one chord is A, it's A for a measure. Actually, it's A for four measures, the, the start. Then it goes to D7 for two measures, back to A for two measures. Now, instead of E, it goes to G7 Lydian dominant. And then from the G7 Lydian dominant to a D7, to an A, to an E7 sharp nine. So again, that turnaround, is G7, Lydian dominant, so I play a seven sharp 11, to a D, D7, D9, to an A7, to an E7 with a sharp nine. Now, the question is, what do you play over a G7 Lydian dominant? And the answer is Lydian dominant, the scale Lydian dominant. So what are those notes? It's one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, and flat seven. Could be thought of as D melodic minor, the fourth mode of D melodic minor. Now, Scott is an expert player. He's, an, he's a genius of playing the guitar. So he's not just going to play that scale up and down. He has that chromatic bebop -y vocabulary all over the place with it. So the, the trick with this line is to really try to visualize it the way he does using the same fingerings that I'm going to show you right now. And the only way you're going to have success visualizing this is by seeing the changes in their appropriate boxes. So it starts off right around the 12th fret, but he's playing over a G. Now, I will say he's playing a pickup, meaning the he starts his line when it's still measure eight, meaning he's still playing on A7, the one chord. So it goes. And then he lands on that G7. But in his thinking, he's already in G. He's already playing the material. He's, he's kind of anticipating the chord change. So he's already in that G Lydian dominant thing as he's playing on the A. Let's break down the lick. So the first thing you want to do is visualize that pattern he's playing stretched out over two positions of the G. The first one is a G-shaped G up here. The second one is this A-shaped G. So the line he's playing is kind of in two parts or really three parts. There's the line that he's playing in the G shape, then there's this chromatic transition down, and then he's finishing it up on this A shape. So we have this. And to me, when he gets here, he's already inside that A shape G. Here's the thing, you're gonna have to just learn it. Like I see a lot of YouTubers spending a lot of time being like, it's the third, it's the fifth, it's the sixth. You know, all that is true, but it doesn't help you remember shit, right? So what you're gonna have to do is just learn it note by note. and have it under your fingers. Then it's okay to understand what's happening. I would section it off in my mind as separating things between being diatonic, meaning belonging to that D melodic minor, and then maybe if there's, there's a chromatic section in then, so maybe that's sort of in a question mark. You wanna understand how the notes are sitting there rhythmically and why it works. And then there's the way the lick ends, which is super interesting and we'll talk about that. So the first bit of it is all diatonic. That's just melodic minor.
You have this little beboppy lick that he's using. You can think about it as an enclosure around the sharp 11 that then goes to approach notes to the third. Now, after that, he plays this half step lick spaced between two strings that he's using to transition to the next position. That's a really useful tool. It gets you from point A to point B. So now he's in that A shape right here. Now, from that point, he has what I would consider the most interesting part of the whole lick uh, because it has two elements. First is a big leap, and the other one is resolving to a very unpredictable place that's outside of the harmony. So he goes. Now that thing pull, is just interesting. What is that? So I'm, I'm going to do the thing I hate by uh, telling you the intervals on the chord, but in this case, it's important. So that hinge note that he's using, like that F is the flat seven of that G. And then he goes three, two, three. And then the last bit of the lick, the way he's resolving it is so unusual. He goes. So what is that sound? On that G7, he's going from playing the two to the flat two. That's not inside Lydian dominant. That's just this bluesy, weird sound that really seems to work. It just hangs out like a fart in the air. We go from that point to playing the four chord. Now on the four chord, he does something that for me just blew my mind fingering wise because I never saw anybody play like that. As it goes to the four chord in eight, the D7, he plays an enclosure around the third. And then he grabs this flat seven here, slides it down to the six, flat three, one of that D chord. Very unusual fingering, but awesome, right? So the line up to that point. And he finishes off on the one chord by playing this shape that I really call the fusiony diminished trick, right? And that's a lot of guitar players do this. I think Schofield is the one everybody's been ripping off for uh, decades now with this shape. I, he's the guy that really does it a ton, but Scott does it all the time. And it's just this thing of skipping a string and playing flat three, flat five, root, flat three. So it's a diminished arpeggio skipping the six. So he uses that thing as a pattern. So on the A, it's mainly that. And then just ends on that chord. So I would really section off learning this lick in three chunks. The Lydian dominant plus beboppy chromatic language chunk. That cool fingering on the four chord. Which is just sick. I mean, that's just, if, if you're gonna take one thing away from it that like can be in your playing in five minutes that I'm sure you're not seeing the guitar that way, it's that, right? So the four chord. That area for guitar player is really missing. And again, it's all about that G-shaped chord. If I look at the four chord right here with that caged thing, this is my G-shaped D. Right here, I have that. If I try to apply that to the one, the same pattern. Five. Four. One. Right, so that's how you extrapolate something from the lick and put it on other chords, right? If you know it in one place in the guitar, you know it in many places because it just works on dominant chords. So that's the whole thing. I really want to take a moment and tell you guys to subscribe to the channel. Please check out the other videos. I'm putting out a ton of content right now, breaking down all your favorite guitar players, licks, harmony tips, all these tools. Please leave a comment, subscribe, like the page, ring the bell. I don't know if there's still a bell. I haven't 
seen the bell on the wall. There's still a bell? Okay. Ring the bell. Uh, and uh, yeah, just do all the stuff to where you get the notifications. And uh, let's grow this channel together. See you guys.